welcome everyone in our previous session we have observed the energy efficiency performance of the furnace and we have observed that how to identify the efficiency of furnace using direct and indirect method we have also observed the different fuel economy measures in furnace today i would like to start with one another thermal utility or you can say the part of thermal utility that is insulation and refractory material so let's begin our today's session with the insulation and refractory material so what do you mean by insulation just recall what do you mean by insulation because you have studied the critical thickness of insulation in the subject heat transfer in semester 5 so you can say the insulation is a type of material which resists the flow of heat which resists the flow of heat and basically the insulation has a two type first one hot insulation hot insulation is used to avoid the rejection of heat particularly for example in the thermal power station generally we will provide insulation over the piping network which carry the steam inside okay to avoid the loss of heat from the steam so you can say it is hot insulation while the cold insulation is the type of insulation which we equip our particular pipe in order to avoid heat gain from the surrounding for example in the refrigeration and air conditioning the piping network that is connect the expansion valve and the evaporator that particular line we connect with the copper pipe and insulated it thoroughly so that the refrigerant will not gain heat from the surrounding okay so insulation has basically two type first one is hot insulation and second one is cold insulation and the main purpose of insulation is to avoid unnecessary or you can say unwanted heat transfer okay for example if you are dealing with the hot insulation then our prime motto is to avoid the heat loss from the system and if we are dealing with the cold insulation then our motto is to avoid heat absorption clear now next one i would like to discuss the insulation type according to the temperature so you can say according to the temperature the insulation has main three category first one is the low temperature insulation that can bear temperature up to 90 degree and second one is a medium temperature insulation that can hold temperature in between 90 to 350 and high temperature insulation that can bear up the temperature above 350 degree okay and if you observe here in particular picture i have mentioned the different type of material as well for the different type of insulation for example for the low temperature insulation we can use a different kind of material like cork then after wood then after magnesia then after mineral fibers okay likewise we have a lots of material that we can use for the temperature up to 90 degree similar way in the medium temperature insulation if you observe then we can have only three material that we can use in order to uh, have a insulation uh, that materials are first one is magnesia then after asbestos then after calcium silicate and mineral fibers okay generally the asbestos is uh, one of the better material okay because its thermal conductivity is quite low and offer a uh, huge heat resistance okay recall our uh, laboratory session in the heat transfer in heat transfer we have one practical that is the to identify the thermal conductivity of the sphere 
and in sphere we have measured the thermal conductivity of asbestos and th thermal conductivity of asbestos is quite less so it's here as a perfect insulator okay whenever we are selecting any type of insulator at that time prime requirement is to observe the thermal conductivity of the material the material having the low thermal conductivity is one of the best or you can say suitable material for the applications which require insulation now if we observe the high temperature insulation okay in which we have a several type of material as well that are asbestos then after calcium silicate mineral fiber mica fire clay ceramic fiber okay so we have lots of material available for the insulation but generally in the field of mechanical uh, we are prefer the glass wool more okay so it is all about the various type of insulation now i would like to discuss the application of insulation as i mentioned you that uh, we are belongs from the mechanical family so we all aware about the application of the insulation and in fact we have already studied this thing in semester number 5 in heat transfer generally the insulations are used okay to avoid the unnecessary or unwanted heat transfer so we have lots of applications so first application is to insulate the boat water supply and return hydraulic piping of gas fired boiler generally in thermal power plant the steam pipe is covered with the insulator so that uh, the heat losses will get minimized and we will obtain the maximum thermal efficiency because during the discussion of the boiler we have discussed one thing that the boiler efficiency is nothing but the output by input and output is the heat energy associated with the steam so if steam loss the maximum amount of the heat then the efficiency of boiler is going to be reduced so what we need to do we need to insulate the pipeline which connect the turbine and the boiler okay so that uh, we are able to save the energy and we are able to optimize the energy conservation kind of thing okay so you can say it is a uh, one of the top application of insulation the next one is cabin insulation of aeroplane generally in aeroplane whenever the any flight is flying at that time because of the high friction there might be chances that the passenger cabin may be get heated so in order to over this kind of the phenomena it should require to have a thorough insulation so for that we can also use the different kind of insulation in this diagram uh, you can clearly visualize the thing that how the boeing 7478 is insulated okay then after next one is a uh, uh, common insulation application in apartment building in ontario when we are dealing with the central air conditioning plant at that time it should require to connect the chilling water pipeline with the help of insulation to avoid heat absorption by the chilled water okay, because in air conditioning system essentially what we are dealing is with the water water is uh, cool and we need to supply air over that so that the temperature of air will getting reduced so it's our prime duty to maintain the certain temperature of water in order to maintain the certain amount of the temperature inside the room next one is the insulation application in milk plant during the milk production to store the milk for the few days we require refrigeration system and in refrigeration system okay the heat absorption is required to be avoided so that we require insulation to store the milk now next one is the economic thickness of insulation as we know that uh, it is not said that the, with the increase in the thickness of the insulation we can avoid the unwanted heat transfer there is a certain thickness up to which heat transfer increase and after which it decreases and this concept is called the critical thickness of the insulation that we have studied in uh, heat transfer subject in semester number 5 we have derived equation for the critical thickness for the cylinder as well as a sphere in heat transfer subject and from that we know that 
it is not such that uh, with the increase in the thickness of insulation there is always reduction in unwanted heat transfer up to certain thickness we can provide insulation and that thickness is known as critical thickness okay so uh, whenever we are dealing with the insulation at that time we need to observe the, the economical thickness of the insulation which means here you can say in diagram we have a insulation thickness on x axis and the annual cost on the y axis but obviously know that if we increase the thickness of the insulation then what is going to be happen then the annual cost behind the production or you can say behind the maintenance is going to be increased because higher thickness means we require to purchase more material which means more cost so from the graph you can see with the increase in the thickness of the insulation the annual cost is going to be increase on the other hand you can say the fuel cost is going to be reduced because of the avoidance of the unnecessary heat transfer which means to identify particular point at which we will get maximum efficiency it is required to plot this kind of the graph and from this type of graph we are able to identify the break even point and from the break even point we are able to identify the optimum thickness of the insulation here in this case if you observe this diagram is generally for the example and from this diagram we can say the insulation thickness of 9 mm will provide the maximum economy in context with the finance okay so it's better to go for the insulation which provide the optimum value as well as provide the economical benefit okay along with the technical aspect we also need to observe the economical aspect as well so the economical thickness of insulation is quite important which you will get by plotting this kind of graph but for that you require different fuel cost then after material cost of the insulation okay now next i would like to discuss the heat sharing and the application criteria for the insulator first one what you need to do you need to observe the cost of the fuel against the insulation cost for example let's say the cost of the insulation to cover 1 meter long pipe is 1500 rupees and the fuel cost is uh, let's say only 100 rupees then it's not viable then it's not viable to use those kind of insulation second one is annual hour of operation annual hour of operation means for example let's say uh, if you have a shopping mall and in shopping mall uh, you are using air conditioning system just to for uh, one month in a year then it's not viable to have a uh, insulation of uh, uh, having high cost then it's not viable to use insulation having high cost at that time you can go for the cheaper insulation then after heat content of the fuel then after boiler efficiency whenever we are dealing with the thermal power plant then after operating surface temperature then after pipe diameter and the thickness certain time what happens that the pipe thickness is such that it behave as an insulator so at that time we do not require any kind of the external insulation likewise we have lots of parameter that we can consider uh, for the heat sharing and application criteria for the insulation okay so it is all about the insulation next i would like to discuss next i would like to discuss refractory material so you can say refractory material are, are the refractory materials are the type of material which can withstand with the extreme high temperature then after high temperature action of any abrasive particle it can also resist the fluctuation in temperature i mean to say it, this type of material is having a high grip strength so here you can see we have lots of point any material that can be described as a refractory material can withstand with the action of the abrasive particle corrosive solid liquid or gas at a high temperature and uh, if you observe the general properties of the refractory material then you can say as i told you it has the ability to withstand with the high temperature the ability to withstand the sudden change of temperature it has the ability to withstand the action of the molten metal 
it has the ability to withstand with a different load okay likewise we have lots of property for the refractory material in fact it is one of the subject of material science okay but in ecm we are going to discuss only few things that is related with the thermal science particularly okay so let me begin with the type of refractory material so it is a two type chemical nature and the refractory nature the chemical refractory is further classified in three type acidic refractory basic refractory then after neutral refractory it is based on the value of ph then a second classification is the refractory ness in which we have a several category again first one is a low heat duty type of material then after intermediate heat duty material high heat duty material and the super heat duty material Okay, so in classification, you have to remember only this thing. Now, what are the criteria for the selection of the refractory material for the particular application? So, you can say first of all, we need to observe the area of application for which area we are required to use refractory material. For example, for the furnace in the casting industry, they are for the heat treatment process. Then, after working temperature range. Okay, then after extent of abrasion and its impact. Certain time what is going to be happen, uh, we need to deal with the extreme high temperature. For example, in the CNC machine, at that time, we have a bed or the structure of the machine should have a high value of refractoriness so that it can bear the maximum temperature. Then after structural load of the furnace, stress due to the temperature gradient in the structure, then after chemical compatibility okay so we have a several parameter here that i have mentioned all those parameter we have to consider at the time of selection of the refractory material and if you observe the application then you can say mainly the refractory materials are used in the furnace okay to cover the inner layer as well as the outer layer of the furnace so that the main structure can be at extreme high temperature. Okay. It is all about the today's session. Thank you and stay tuned for the next session.